Well, this is the spacecraft, the first to interstellar space. We made it. The spaceship left the solar system in 2012 and is currently more than 15 billion miles from Earth. At first, it looked like background noise, just more static from the endless dark, the same kind of harmless blips it's been sending for years since slipping into interstellar space. This is the first time we have been exploring now, begin to explore uh, this new region of space, interstellar space. But then the pattern changed, bursts of high energy particles hitting in rhythms no one could explain. Instruments that had stayed calm for decades started flaring up. Readings spiked, alarms followed, and for the first time in years, the scientists monitoring Voyager 2 paused, because what they saw didn't match anything that had come before, something Voyager wasn't supposed to find. Before the darkness. To understand what Voyager might have seen in those final moments, you have to remember what it was built for and what it's already survived. Launched in 1977 alongside its twin, Voyager 2's original mission was short and focused, five years and four planets. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, a grand tour of the outer solar system. But the spacecraft had other plans. It didn't just visit those distant worlds, transformed how people understood them. Jupiter came first, and with it came the first of many shocks. Voyager didn't just capture the planet's famous Great Red Spot. It showed that the entire planet was a churning atmosphere of violent motion, storms within storms, lightning bolts larger than continents, and chaotic cloud bands that stretched around its massive frame. But the real surprise wasn't the planet itself. It was the moons. Io, in particular, stunned scientists. No one expected active volcanoes on a moon, not that far from the sun, not in such a dead zone of space. But there they were. Towers of lava erupting into the vacuum, shaping the surface in real time. It was the first clear sign that gravitational forces could generate enough heat to create geological activity, even far from any star. Saturn followed, and its beauty was almost deceptive. Voyager's cameras revealed the famous rings in unprecedented detail, not as a solid halo, but as millions of individual particles, some as small as pebbles, others the size of mountains. And they weren't just floating quietly. The rings twisted, they twisted. They bent in places no one expected, shaped by small nearby moons that pulled on them with invisible force. These tiny moons carved paths through the rings, like trails pressed into powder. Even Saturn's moon Enceladus surprised everyone. It showed signs of warmth under its frozen surface. Cracks and ridges hinted that something might be moving below, maybe even an ocean, trapped beneath layers of ice. What seemed like a calm, distant world turned out to be full of activity and wonder. Voyager 2 then turned toward Uranus, a planet that broke almost every rule. Its atmosphere was pale and subdued, but beneath the calm was a magnetic field unlike anything seen before, uneven, strangely tilted and constantly shifting. The planet rotated on its side, probably knocked over long ago by a massive space collision. Because of that tilt, each of its seasons lasts for decades. As Voyager flew past, it spotted ten new moons moving in strange, uneven orbits. It also found two faint, dark rings that were barely visible against the blackness of space. But the biggest surprise came from the planet's magnetic tail. Voyager detected something odd, a plasmoid. Basically, a huge bubble of energy and particles being pushed out into space. It was proof that Uranus's magnetic field wasn't just unusual. It was active. It was changing. Each stop on this journey stretched Voyager's limits and rewrote textbooks. And yet, it kept going. No repairs. No refueling, just a small nuclear heart pulsing forward into deeper cold. And Neptune, the last stop on the Grand Tour, refused to go quietly. Voyager approached its deep blue atmosphere and saw something no one expected. Winds faster than sound, storms with shadows, and an active moon, Triton, spitting icy plumes into space. The surface was frozen, but something beneath was stirring. Crossing the Line by the time Voyager 2 completed its final planetary encounter, it had already broken records that no spacecraft had touched. It had visited four giant planets, discovered dozens of moons, and captured images that changed the way Earth saw its own neighborhood. By every definition, the mission had already gone further than anyone had dared to expect. But Voyager wasn't finished. Not even close. But its most important journey, the one no one could fully predict, hadn't even started yet. The mission entered its quietest and most dangerous phase, not because of what it might hit, but because of what it might not. For the next years, it kept going, quietly, relentlessly, 
drifting through the dark outskirts of the solar system, where sunlight fades and the solar wind begins to vanish. Out there, the temperature drops to near absolute zero, radiation builds, and the light from the sun, once blinding, weakens to something more like a memory. There are no planets in this region, no gravitational assists, just a slow, cold march into nothingness. At that distance, space itself starts to change. It becomes colder and less familiar. And Voyager 2, still alive on a radioactive trickle of power, was heading straight into it. This invisible boundary, the heliopause, marks the end of the sun's influence. Inside, the solar wind pushes outward. Outside, interstellar particles push back. It's not a wall, but it is a threshold. A crossing of sorts, from one environment into another, stranger one. And in 2018, after over 40 years in flight, Voyager 2 crossed it. The transition wasn't dramatic. There was no alarm, no signal flare, no camera flash, just data, shifts, a whisper of change. But its instruments caught something subtle, a change in particle flow, a spike in plasma density, and a shift in the magnetic field. The spacecraft was no longer sailing in the sun's wind. It was now drifting in the galactic sea beyond. It became the second human object to ever leave the heliosphere, after Voyager 1, which had passed through six years earlier. But unlike its twin, Voyager 2 still had a functioning plasma instrument. It still had ears. It could hear the space around it. And what it detected was strange. The space beyond the solar system was supposed to be silent, a quiet emptiness between stars. But it wasn't. There was a hum, faint, high-pitched, continuous. It wasn't noise from Earth, and it wasn't from the Sun. This was interstellar plasma, vibrating at a frequency Voyager 2 had never heard before. And it didn't stop. It went on for days, then weeks, then months. Always the same frequency. No pauses, no breaks, just the eerie song of space. This was the first time humanity had measured the density of plasma in deep space over time. Not a snapshot, but a continuous recording. And as Voyager moved deeper, the data began to challenge what scientists thought they knew about the space between stars. The further Voyager drifted, the clearer it became. Interstellar space wasn't empty at all. It was just quiet in ways we hadn't learned to listen for. And as that soft hum played on through Voyager's sensors, something else was building, something unexpected. A strange burst, not just a change in plasma, but a signal. One that would come just before the final data. The final data. For most of its life, Voyager 2 spoke in whispers, a slow, distant stream of ones and zeros, gently caught and translated by the deep space network back on Earth. Each signal was like a heartbeat, delayed, faint, but steady. Scientists waited hours just to receive a few precious bits, and every successful downlink, no matter how small, was a quiet miracle, a voice from the edge of the solar system. For decades, this voice had been clear, predictable, constant, until it wasn't. Voyager 2 is now over 14 billion miles away. At that distance, even the simplest command takes more than 18 hours to arrive, and another 18 to hear a reply. That's nearly two days for a single interaction. Two days to confirm whether the spacecraft is still listening. Two days to know if it's still alive. So when the signal began to shift, no one caught it right away. The monitoring team had grown smaller over the years. Some of the original engineers had retired. Others had passed on. Those who remained were deeply familiar with Voyager's quirks, enough to spot anomalies, but also calm enough not to overreact. At first, it didn't look like failure. It looked like noise, static. One of the instruments had likely given out. That wouldn't have been surprising. Voyager 2 runs on less power than a fridge light bulb. Most of its systems have been shut down to conserve energy. Only a handful remain active, and even those are aging fast. But the noise didn't stop. Buried deep in the plasma wave subsystem, strange bursts began to appear. They were jagged, slow, uneven, but also consistent. Engineers thought it might be interference, software drift, but the structure of the signal was too deliberate. It didn't feel random, it felt structured. It felt like the spacecraft was trying to say something in a new way. NASA issued a soft reset, a gentle command to realign Voyager's systems, but there was no reply. For weeks, the signal continued, but it made no sense. There was no telemetry, no confirmation of orientation. It was like speaking to someone who was still talking, but no longer in the same language. And then, nothing. Silence. It became the longest blackout in the spacecraft's history. In those hours, no one knew what had happened. The probe might have frozen. It could have spun out of alignment. It might have collided with something invisible. But then, the carrier tone returned. 
weak, but real. And as data slowly came back online, something strange emerged in the plasma wave instrument. It wasn't just background hum, it wasn't solar noise. A low-frequency signal had taken shape. It didn't match any known solar activity. It didn't align with interference from Earth. It pulsed, slowly, cleanly, rhythmic. Some believed it could be an echo, Voyager's own signal bouncing off a dense patch of plasma. Others thought it might be a byproduct of the recovery process, noise created by aging systems waking up. But a few weren't so sure, because the signal didn't look like failure. It looked intentional. A quiet relief from a machine that has seen more of the galaxy than any other human creation. Whatever this new signal is, it may be the final heartbeat before drifting into permanent darkness. What did Voyager 2 see? In the wake of the blackout, as Voyager 2's systems slowly came back online, the stream of ones and zeros returned. Not perfectly, not all at once, but enough to remind the team that the spacecraft was still out there, still functional, still trying to speak. The first thing to come through wasn't a system log or orientation data. It wasn't temperature, voltage, or propulsion telemetry. It was plasma wave information. Voyager 2's plasma wave subsystem, one of the few instruments still drawing power, had been recording changes during the blackout. And now, that data was arriving back on Earth. It didn't look like the usual low-level hum of interstellar space. Normally, these readings reflect the ambient plasma density, the thin soup of charged particles that drifts between stars. But this time, the signal showed something stronger, a distinct low-frequency rise. It wasn't sharp or chaotic, but it wasn't random either. It pulsed, it repeated. Engineers called it structured, not a solar flare, not background interference, something with a shape. The frequency didn't match anything typical. No known interference sources, no obvious electromagnetic origin. The pattern had a rhythm to it, as if something, some region or force, was moving in a way they hadn't seen before. Some suspected it might be an echo of Voyager's own signal bouncing off dense pockets of plasma just beyond the heliopause. Others believed it could be a standing wave, created by the boundary between solar wind and interstellar space, reacting in ways still not fully understood. But here's what was clear. This wasn't noise. It wasn't an accident. Whatever Voyager 2 had passed through during its communication loss, it had interacted with a field of particles dense and active enough to leave a signature. And that, alone, was a clue. Voyager 2 had already made history by entering interstellar space in November 2018. It confirmed this milestone by detecting a dramatic drop in solar particles and a rise in galactic cosmic rays, evidence it had left the protective bubble of the heliosphere. But what came after that? That's where things got even more interesting. The data now showed fluctuating plasma densities, sudden increases followed by dips. Not smooth, not linear. Something was stirring in the void, and Voyager's sensors, though aging, were still sharp enough to pick it up. This wasn't a one-time reading, either. The plasma wave instrument had been passively recording during the entire silent phase. When communication was restored, all that backlog began funneling in, giving scientists a rare look at what happens in the darkness between stars, especially during a period when all other systems were presumed offline. There was no visual proof, just vibrations. But in space, vibrations speak louder than anything else. The magnetic field readings, though not as dramatic as the plasma waves, also detected detected shifts through its magnetometer. Small ones, weak, but measurable. Magnetic pressure in the local interstellar medium wasn't consistent, and when overlaid with the plasma data, it suggested a dynamic environment, one in motion, not the silent, frozen space people often imagine. The idea that interstellar space is a cold, quiet place has always been more myth than science. In reality, it's turbulent, alive. And Voyager 2, during its brief blackout and recovery, caught the edges of that storm. The scientific team didn't issue a grand statement. No headlines screamed, Voyager finds new region. But behind the scenes, there was quiet interest. Something about that data didn't sit within the expected models. The shapes, the intervals, the magnetic activity. It all felt just a little off. Could Voyager 2 have passed through a region of compressed plasma? Could it have brushed against a distortion, like a ripple where the solar system's bubble meets a denser part of the galaxy? Even stranger, some researchers pointed out that the orientation of the spacecraft, while not fully confirmed, might have shifted slightly during the event. It's unclear if this was a natural role, a glitch, or an external effect. But if it had moved, even by a few degrees, it might explain why the data patterns were so different from previous readings. Still, there was nothing conclusive. Just questions and patterns in the numbers that didn't fully match expectations with no imaging left and barely enough power to run its instruments. 
with communication windows growing narrower each month. This was Voyager 2's second-to-last message to Earth, and what it truly saw was written in charged particles, strange rhythms, and shifting magnetic lines. The silence ahead. Voyager 2 is still moving, still listening, still sending faint pulses across more than 14 billion miles of space, but it's getting quieter. The signal, once strong and clean, now arrives as a whisper, delayed by 18 hours each way, scattered by distance, and smoothed by time. Its power source, a decaying lump of plutonium-238, is shrinking. Each year, Voyager loses about 4 watts, barely enough to keep a single instrument alive. One by one, systems have been shut off. The heaters, the imagers, the backup protocols. Not because they failed, but because there simply isn't enough power to keep everything running. It runs today on less power than a household light bulb, and yet, what it does with that tiny spark still matters. The data it sends back from interstellar space is the only direct measurement we have of the environment between stars. Its plasma readings, its magnetic field reports, its cosmic ray detections. These tiny fragments of information are rewriting what we know about the Milky Way's outer edge, a region once thought to be empty, but now revealed to be dynamic, restless, alive. It confirmed, for the first time, the actual shape of the heliosphere, the sun's protective bubble. It measured how cosmic radiation behaves beyond that bubble, hinting at how other star systems might protect themselves from the galaxy's chaos. It even showed that interstellar space isn't silent at all. It hums, and that hum, first heard by Voyager, is now used to study areas no other spacecraft will reach for centuries. That's how important its fading breath still is. Now the engineers must choose. What stays on? What dies next? Every decision is a trade-off. Every extension is a sacrifice. To preserve the instruments that still collect useful data, others must be left behind, and soon there will be nothing left to cut. But time is running out. At some point in the next few years, the signal will stop. Not all at once, not like a crash or a failure, just a final unnoticed message. One that fades into the deep without even an echo. And when it happens, it won't just be the end of a mission, it'll be the end of a connection, the last thread between Earth and the farthest human object ever made. There will be no ceremony, parachutes, or recovery, just dead silence. Because Voyager 2 was more than just a spacecraft. It was a translator, a bridge between our small blue planet and the vast cold space beyond it. It showed us Saturn's rings weren't smooth. It found new moons hiding in the shadows of Uranus and Neptune. It recorded the first hum of interstellar plasma, and in its last, broken moments, it showed us images and data we still don't fully understand. It's still out there now, coasting on pure inertia. Just motion, pure and endless. It will keep drifting through the galaxy for billions of years, long after the sun swells and fades, long after Earth itself changes beyond recognition. And even after the power runs out and the signal stops, the spacecraft will still carry its memory. The metal will still be intact, the instruments will still be frozen in place. Voyager's final silence won't mean it's gone, it just means Earth will no longer be listening. A golden record rides with it, still attached to the body of the craft. Inside are sounds of laughter, a mother's heartbeat, greetings in 55 languages, music from different cultures, pictures of children, landscapes, animals, equations, cities. A small, fragile introduction from a species hoping to be known. But even as Voyager 2 prepares to go dark, its story isn't finished, because what it leaves behind might matter even more than what is found.